Okay, so Coach Haywald, first things first, uh, it, it's been a wild uh, five days. It's been a wild five days in America. Would you agree? I agree, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement? No, no, yeah, no. Nah, nah, it's not wild is a good word for it. Yeah. So, okay. Um, in talking to you, um, Frank Romano, who's like 70 years old, he's a 1966 graduate of high school. He was my college coach from Kent State. Frank Romano says yep. he's never seen anything like this in his whole entire life. Correct. Yeah. So I, I, he said this is his 50th year coaching. And he said, just, yeah, nothing, nothing like this. Um, he's, he's, and I've seen a lot in, in, you know, a little over 10 years of coaching. So I could imagine what you see in 50 years. Um, so yeah, he said nothing like it and just, yeah, crazy, crazy. So you, you were, were you in college yet at nine eleven? I was, I was, I would have been my second year of college. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that's been brought up a lot in conversation with people of like the, the closest comparison really, I, I think in terms of the, the, the reaction nationwide. September 11th, 2001, we're attacked by an enemy combatant, right? You know, obviously it's, it's DC, it's Pennsylvania and, um, obviously New York city, right? I mean, so that, that's huge because there's an enemy combatant, right? It's, it's someone trying to kill us and did kill 3000 people basically. Sure. Um, this is a whole nother situation in that if you look at Italy, um, Italy's completely locked down. Have you seen that? I've seen that. And I thought I just heard there's locking down the West coast, like San Francisco. It's locked down area. for three weeks is what I saw for, for San Francisco. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously we're, we're heading on a trajectory towards like what Italy had. And, uh, dude, it's, it, the whole thing is just so crazy to me and it's unprecedented. Um, you know, I talked to Chandler Menard. I talked to, uh, Tyler Warner, probably going to get a whole, I'll get on with like Jeff Breeze, um, coach at Lake Erie college, Joey Simcoe at Tiffin. You're, you guys are Division Three. You're the only Division Three person I've talked to so far, and my ignorance of Division Three right. is great. Is great. So, so you got to help me out with Division Three. How many qualifiers? Yeah, yeah. How many day tournament? So, so uh, we're a two day tournament. So I'll give maybe more information than you're asking for. But there's six regions across the country. They're divided relatively equally on on numbers. In fact, there's a rule that no region could be. Uh, the difference can't be greater than three teams. So I think, you know, you might have 17 and you might have 20 is, is the biggest difference. Uh, very much geographically, you know, there's a few areas where on those borders there, they get a little funny, but for the most part, um, so our region is, is not necessarily because of the States, but it's all the schools from Ohio, all the schools from Indiana and all the schools from Michigan that are, are D three. So um, again, it doesn't have, I'm sorry, what? OAC. Yep, the OAC, and then there's Wabash, actually only three schools Manchester. in Manchester. Yeah, Wabash, Manchester, Trine, okay. uh, Michigan, Alma, Adrian, Olivet. Okay. And then you have the other Ohio schools, Case Western Reserve, Mount St. Joe's. Um, I'm probably missing someone, but that is our region. So top three qualify from each of the six regions, putting together an 18-man bracket at the national tournament. Okay. Friday, Saturday, deal. If you, if you get through Friday, you are an All-American. Okay. Uh, so you wrestle three rounds on Friday. Championship, uh, two counting the rat tail, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I guess yeah. Championship, championship, rat tails, prelims, quarterfinals, yep. consos. You wrestle that blood round Friday evening. Yep. Okay. So um, and D three has had more te- has more teams than D two, but D two keeps adding, right? Yeah, D three's been adding. I want to say. There's going to be four or five new ones just next year. It seems to be three to four per year. Hiram, for example, right here uh, in Ohio will be a new program next year. Uh, so we have, I want to say it's like 108 or something okay. like that in, in Division schools? Three. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and that will be past, you know, like I said, three, four more next year. Is Hiram adding both uh, men's and women's? They are. I, the plan, what I last read, was men next season, women the following season. Okay. Hiram is uh, 11 miles from my house. Oh, nice. It would, it would be the closest college program with wrestling. 
You guys are about 25 minutes. You and Notre Dame College are about 25 minutes, 30 minutes from yep. my house, give or take. And then, because um, you live in Solon, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. Go Comets. Go Comets. You know, my wife, that's where she teaches. My wife's a high school teacher there. Oh, nice. It's number one school district in the state. Good okay. for her. I can tell you why. <laughs> if you go look at this Twitter video, my wife is in there teaching right now. My wife is, <laughs> I swear to you, I'm telling you, like Riverside, where I teach, we're suspended through March 30th. Like lessons, online lessons don't begin until March 30th for our kids. They're they're at it right now. Solon is like nice. pushing their nine weeks. And, and yeah, like you're saying, it's number one. And is that where you went? You went to Solon High School, did you? I did, yeah. Yes. Okay. So Vinny G, D. Giovanni was your head coach, right? Tony. Vinny Tony. was, was Vinny, his Vinny's son. His son. Okay. Um, yep. Is Vinny a year younger than you? He's... Two, I was a senior. He was a sophomore. He won state yeah. as a senior, didn't he? He was, yeah. He was a runner-up as a sophomore. Didn't place as a junior. Was a, a champ his senior year. Okay, so his sophomore year, you guys, did you guys make it to state together? I did. Yeah, I did. I did not place. I, I watched him. You didn't fan. place at state. Did you ever place for Solon? <laughs> I never. I was not a state placer. I qualified only as a senior, okay. and uh, yeah, I, I did a lot better in college. Did yeah? And you're how many time All American for John Carroll? Uh, three-time academic All-American, um, <laughs> just once. On, uh, just, oh, on just the once, just once. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring I that. I, I'm sorry. Times. My bad. My bad. I didn't. I didn't mean yeah. that. My bad. I got there four times. It always fell short. You know, three out of four. But that is the sport. Yeah, that's a part of the deal. And it's crazy because your dad is a Division One and a D- Division Three All-American. Uh, how many times All-American in D three was your dad? So he was third, first, first, and then fifth in uh, the D1s. And and I forget, I want to say it was up to maybe like 1990 or around then. They were allowing those the D3 champs to, 89, 90 to go. 89-90 might have been the last year because Hasselrig won. Hasselrig won 80, 88-89-90 is what I want to say. Or okay. 80, 80, 87, 88, 80, 99, I think, I, if, if I'm not wrong, because Hasselrig won six titles. He won... Yeah, yeah, and he's D two, UPJ is yeah. D two. So, whole thing is. And so I think there's crazy. been one or two D three guys who went on to win the D one title. I know a guy from Montclair. That's so crazy. Um, I think there's one other, maybe a New Jersey guy. You got to be crazy good, dude. <laughs> crazy good. Yeah, times have changed. I think. I mean, back then, and and, and this would be a whole other conversation. I I think a guy who could be a, a a complete stud just goes D3 because that's a school down the road. And, and the scholarship at D1 might have been like, hey, we'll pay your full ride, you know. Otherwise, you're out of, you're out of pocket three grand because, you know, that's what tuition was. So, you know, great. people just kind of went divisions, whatever. Okay. So how many D3 schools have you been the head coach of? Uh, three. Three. So when I, I left uh, Carroll, I actually spent a year at Notre Dame, the first year of the program, as an assistant under Frank. And then was at Mountain Union for five, Case Western Reserve for three, and then back at Carroll now. Just finished my fifth year. So five, three, five. So you're 13 years as a head div- head coach in Division Three. Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, and you wrestled all all of your years, four or five years at John Carroll. I was five. So back in those days, uh, <laughs> you could take a red shirt. So I did a red shirt. Um. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It just, to me, I, I made sense, um, to take a year to develop and that's what I did. So I took that red shirt year, my first year, went some opens, practiced every day and then, uh, went four, four years after that wrestled. Okay. So yeah, it's just, you know, I don't think a lot of people know a lot about division three wrestling. Um, you guys don't give athletic grants, but you give grant and aid, correct? Correct. Yeah. Need based and, uh, academic based. So, you know, you're as a coach, we always kind of look for maybe like a, a sweet spot, right? You got to find that guy who who hits the numbers, you know, uh, academically. But then again, if he's too high, he's going to go, he's going Ivy League or something. So, you know, you want to find that guy who's good enough to get the good grants and aid and then, but not so good that he, he looks down on our education. So that's uh, kind of a sweet spot. Same thing uh, financially, you know, certain families it's it's a weird thing. It's like they they make enough money to not qualify, but then um, not enough money that they can just dish out the 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 money required. So 
it's, it's a constant balance and challenge, but, um, in the end of the day, I think we, we tend to get the people who are picking a division three school for a division three school, not, not for wrestling. Uh, you know, and it's like, um, whenever I talk like, like a guy like Willie Saylor, he's like, if you're D2, you're D3, you're D2, you're D3 for a reason. I mean, I, I don't think he's totally wrong there, but I think that, I think your biggest battles that you guys fight is you're fighting with the Ivy League. If a guy's good sure. enough, he's going to go to the Ivy League. It's just like, I know you guys can't talk about names and recruits, but like, if you look at Hatcher, Hatcher's going for the guy from Brexville. He's going to Cornell, but that's a guy I think that, you know, like if he's, if he's fifth or sixth in the state, he, maybe he looks at John Carroll, you know what I mean? Rather than sure, top two, definitely. top three, you know what I mean? So it's like, he's right to a degree. Well, one thing I say often is I think a lot of wrestlers want to wrestle division three. They just don't know it. Um, I mean, the, the, the balance, you know, I'll talk to a, uh, someone I know who wrestled D one for two years and they, then they, it didn't work out. Um, and they're like, yeah, I hated it. I, I, uh, you know, had to do this, 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 the coach controlled my life, all that stuff. And then I'm like, well, yeah, he sounds like you would have loved division three wrestling. And they're like, but then their ego, ah, oh, I would never do that. It's like, man, it's a great sport, uh, but a lot of people don't want it to be everything about them. And that's where I think D3 is great. It, it's, it's, I, I like to say our guys, you know, we want to win. We want to be the best we can be. We want to be all Americans, national champs, all that stuff. But um, we don't get many guys leaving Carroll other than myself uh, who want to become coaches and, and they all actually all want to become coaches. And then their first job offer, they go, coach, what do you think about this? Um, and I'm like, you're, you're 22 and your first job offer is more money than I make. Um, and they're like, Oh really? I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't think I want to coach. You know, we, we put people in, into careers. Um, and that's, that's something I enjoy. I think the, the best example of what you're saying is like dry James. Draw James mm-hmm. and, and his younger brother Jordan. Um, those guys are D one talents. There's no question. But D three is was is is and what's best for those guys, in my opinion. Sure. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, this is this is four years, and and uh, I think you know count on on one you know two hands maybe how many wrestlers are making over six figures. Um, not many. So so. How many former wrestlers are, are making six figures uh, in professional careers? Like all of them, you yeah, know? All so it's, it, 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 yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I think that's, that's what it is. Um, and, you know, if we had a professional league, then, then division one might make a little more sense because if that's the only way to get into it, then so be it. Okay. So let's rewind to last Thursday. It's Tuesday already. You sure. know, we're five days removed, but let's, let's rewind back last Thursday. Um, where were you when you got the news? You guys, was it Cedar Falls? Where was your NCAA tournament at? Uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So we had a meeting at uh, 2 o'clock Central. Uh, that meeting was over at 3 o'clock. And uh, at 3.30, um, probably by 3.15, I kept hearing the room, you know, it's canceled, it's canceled, it's canceled. And I just told my guys, I said, until I get an official statement from the NCAA, we're wrestling and you know 10 15 minutes later i got a text email all that stuff said it was done so as of our meeting at two o'clock it was on um it was i was like joking with a couple coaches because they they no longer were, were charging admission all refunds were issued and they just gave each coach a packet of tickets which was for, for no charge six tickets per wrestler and i was like joking with the other coach i go hey if we go up to get our tickets and they're like, Oh, uh, we'll explain later, but we're not giving the tickets right now. That's probably a good sign that things are canceled, but they're like, here's your tickets, uh, check in, you know, all this stuff went through the meeting explained. This is, a, you know, it's all logistics. Make sure your kids are here at this time. Weigh ins, this, 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 um, leave the meeting or like it's happening. So that was that. And then half hour later it was, it was gone. So, um, we were actually getting ready to go practice, um, and get our weights down. And then, um, and that was it. So how many qualifiers and what were the, what were the years of each qualifier? How many freshmen, junior, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, what'd you have? Seniors, yeah, three, you have? four, uh, two sophomores, Andrew Perelka and Luke Krakowski at, um, 125 and 165. 
And then uh, Junior and Jared Brezovic, 141. Uh, and then Sammy Gross uh, is a junior eligibility wise, but he's actually, uh, he's in grad school right now. So, um, so everybody has, uh, one or two years left after this year. So I, I don't, I don't know what that would be like. And I'm glad I don't, what those coaches dealing with their seniors would have been like, because I mean, I, I know if I would, I would have took that like a death, you know, if I was a senior wrestler, right. Like that would have been horrible. Um, yeah. So I feel bad for for all those people, but you know, thankfully um, for us, we didn't have to deal with that. It was just, you know, it was it was bad. I think we were also warned. Like I I, I described it like almost like like a death, you know, in, in say like you know you have a family member who's been sick for five years and then they finally die. You're not as broken as if it just came out of nowhere. Like yeah. every every move we made, we're like getting on the airplane, and I'm going are they going to ground flights we land we're like okay is this happening so so we were suspecting this for a while um and even i talked to coaches after that meeting they said until the whistle blows i don't i'm not confident this is happening so our our guys were warned they were hearing rumors all week so i think that made it a little easier too you know i got some real perspective in all these interviews i've been doing um uh chandler menard from from ashland his brother died of a fentanyl overdose. Oh, wow. And and that to me is the biggest, you know, there, there's a lot of kicks to the gut, but, you know, his older brother sure. he shared bunk beds with. When that kid told me that, I, and, and he was like, I haven't even thought of it like that. Like, he hadn't thought of that until I brought it up to him. And he, you know, and I asked him, you know, you've had some horrible things happen in your life. And, and, he, sure. and he taught, and I was like, dude, you, you have perspective. And then, and then it almost like changed for him. It felt like, like he's like, oh yeah, the worst thing in the world's already happened to me. You know, one of the worst things ever. You know, his brother yeah, died yeah. Of, a, of a drug overdose. And, and the, the dude has amazing perspective. Colin Moore has amazing perspective. He even said that he's like, you know, all my failure and all my, you know, awful things that have happened to me in life have been wrestling things. You know what I mean? And I'm like, no doubt, yeah. and, and he was like, it's not like it's a death. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I've I actually that's something I, I touch on. We we do like an awards banquet, you know, every year, and I always start with like a story about perspective, and it's you know a story kind of like our worst day in the entire past year was you know in a given year it's a guy not qualifying or a guy not all American, and uh, I mean college athletics don't even exist in other countries. Uh, you know, Division three athletics, w- whatever. Say our say a, a, an all American and. and or national champ in division three is maybe in the entire country, the call him the, the 20th best, even wrestler at, at his weight or 30th best, or I don't know. And that guy's not competing in most countries. You are not good enough. If you're only the 20th best to have an opportunity to compete, um, you know, they are only, you know, a lot of these Russian countries, if you're not in the top five or six at your weight class, that's it. You know, don't waste your time. Uh, so, so yeah, the fact that these guys can compete, it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, the NCAA has got a lot of negative press about it, but same, and, and they're not perfect by any means, but man, same thing. They give so many opportunities, so many kids. Um, and really, I mean, I've coached a lot of kids who stink. <laughs> they're not good, not good wrestlers, but they're able to do it. Right. And that, that opportunity doesn't exist a lot of places. So for sure. Yeah. Our guys handled it really well. I mean, uh, I was more maybe proud of that than anything else of like, they were just like, they knew the situation. It wasn't, it wasn't like, I don't know. I'm trying to, the worst case scenario almost would be like, if our school was like, you can't go and every other street went, then that might be something that would sting a little bit. But the way it went down, I think it was there was no way to change it. There's nothing we could do. No, one of the UWs, one of, it was like lacrosse or lacrosse. Player, was it lacrosse? They weren't even sending them. They were not, as of I believe Wednesday or Thursday morning, and then they were cleared to go. That's so crazy. Um, but so like that, that, that right know, there was for me. I was like, that's it. That's it. That's it. Only yeah. one school's got to do that. And that's it. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, and that's you hear all the 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 hearsay like oh well if same thing with the one i heard some schools are not permitting their school their their teams to go and as soon as one team does that it opens up the floodgates yeah um here's what i'll say here's what i'll say about the d1 thing compared to you guys and why the d1 thing's just not nearly as bad 
for me at least, I'm talking selfishly. I wasn't in Minneapolis sitting there ready for the whistle to blow, picking up my media credential, ready to go. I'm here yeah. at home. I got I got 10 days to cancel my flight. I didn't have a hotel yet. Um, You guys were there. You're there. You're in the arena. The mats are laid down. Oh, we were already wrestling with people, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, I, I actually said, like, to me, a, a solution could have been, they say, like, guys, we're starting an hour early on Friday, and we are doing it all in one day. Like, I, I think the damage done there could have been, you know, about the same, right, in terms of spreading things. But uh, at least you could say you got you're getting out of here early. We're we're getting this done. We're not stopping. No breaks. No no uh, parade of all Americans. You know, something like that could have happened. So for sure, that was the hardest part. I mean, we got done. I talked to my guys. We kind of had a moment or whatever you want to call it. And then it was like, we got to get home. And then you start panicking like, well, we don't, it's Thursday. We don't want to be here till Sunday morning. And then you start thinking of like, you know, end of days, like, are, are we going to be stuck here? So we like ended up just staying a night and then we drove, we ended up driving the whole way home. Okay. On, that on was Friday. you guys that um, drove. Was that you guys that weren't allowed to fly back? We, there was nothing that said we couldn't. We just, um, that was a decision I just made because you could not. So, my parents uh, and my wife actually flew in Thursday. Um, as it happened, the cancellation happened while they were midair. They land, they call. I said it's done. They stayed at the airport. They go right to Delta. Delta said we're so backed up, we can't do anything um, here. You got to call. There is a six-hour wait to talk to someone right now. Oh my God. I mean, so it was nightmare. Dude. It was yeah. So I just said, screw it. We're driving. Like I'm, we'll, we'll worry about stuff later. We're just going to get out of here because God forbid we wait, like, you know, and, and get stuck. Um, we're stuck here even longer than we drive home anyway on Sunday morning or something. So, and then same thing. I was like, we could maybe get a flight. I know some teams did change their flights, but I think if you weren't the first one at the airport, you probably weren't going to change that day. So, and it's Cedar Rapids. It's not like it's a, a, a flight hub either. You know, it's yeah. hard to get flights. I have in a hard out. time traveling in and out of Iowa. When I travel to Iowa, usually you got to fly to like the Eastern Iowa Regional Airport, um, the where the, which is near Iowa City, and then you got. I think drive that's Cedar everywhere. Rapids actually, yeah. Eastern Iowa. Yeah, and then there's that one. I mean, there's there's a couple airports, but it, everything is a connection. Whereas like you can go Cleveland to San Francisco, you can go to Cleveland to LAX, you can go you can go direct Cleveland Atlanta. They have no, unless it's either Chicago, Atlanta, Denver, you know what I mean? Those, you don't get a direct flight. You probably, you had to fly to Chicago, didn't you? We were Detroit. Uh, I know people in Chicago. I know people in Minneapolis. I know people in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always, it's never, you have to be one of the top five big ones. Houston, you know what I mean? It's got to be a gigantic airport in order to fly into there. And you're always connecting through somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man, what a logistical nightmare, man! I really got to commend you on getting. How, was was the rental place swamped at all? The where you got? Did you get a van? What'd you get? We had a van. We got one before we got there. Ever I waited till like the, till Friday morning, and I called them. I said, "We're taking this back to Cleveland," and then they're just like, "Okay, you know that we just drove." So I think we had to pay an extra the one way return fee. Yeah, the one way. Yeah, but it was. But yeah, I don't. I don't even know if they were slammed because I never went back to the airport. Um, You're smart. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, it was kind of like hats off to my kids. Like, it was a it was a great van ride home. You know, we were in the van for nine, ten hours, and the guys were in good spirits. And and it's like it's pretty proud of that. Like they're just like we could have sat there and moped for that entire ride, but they were having a good time. You know, just just. Uh, being with each other and that's that was pretty cool so again like if i at that age i was probably an idiot i would have been like sitting in the back moping like a baby so i was pretty proud that my guys were were real you know good spirits about everything so is gross a transfer from northwestern yeah so gross uh was at northwestern for a year um and a little bit uh like i think they're on quarters so i think he didn't finish the, the first quarter of his sophomore year or, or I forget the exact timeline of it. And then came home, uh, was, he's been at Carroll ever since, but he was, he was, uh, a part-time student for I, years are, are escaping me now, probably two years. He was just taking classes. So he came in, uh, 
basically, so last year as he graduated, he was a sophomore eligibility. He had one other year with us. He, he broke his ankle um, early in the season, so never wrestled. Um, and uh, so, so, yeah, he's got um, – and technically he's eligible for a medical hardship. I don't know that <laughs> he would take it. But So that's so right now he's in grad school, and he's, and he's got one more year with us. So he has a uh, degree in economics. He's getting his MBA right now. Okay. He's the type of guy I think obviously is talent wise out of high school. He's the type of guy that can win D three and no question, in my opinion. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we that was he was the sixth seed uh, going in. We felt that he could hang with anybody. I mean, he was beating the the guy he would have saw in the quarters. He was beating him earlier this year and made a mistake and, and got taken down with twenty seconds left to his back. I guess so. He take down would have been fine. He got taken down to his back. Um, and so, yeah, he's competitive. He was, as, as you probably have seen when guys are out of it, it's, you don't, you don't forget a lot, but your, your timing and, and certain things go off and it's taken him a little bit to, uh, to get it back. But now he's pretty, pretty darn tough. Um, so I think next year, he, that's the goal. He wants to win it all. Well, that's good. You at least get him back a year. You know what I mean? And, and like, no. geez, oh, Pete's, when did that guy graduate from high school? He's uh, he's twenty three or twenty four right now. I think he's twenty four. So twenty fifteen grad. This would be his sixth year out, I believe. Yeah, so 2015. 2014, 2015. Something like that, oh, yeah. Geez, oh, but you know what, man? He gets another opportunity. That's good. You know, you know, Colin Moore doesn't. It doesn't sound like he's going to get another opportunity. Uh, I'm going to talk yeah. to Evan Cheek later today. He's probably not going to get another opportunity. Zach Carson, uh, the Menard, oh, yeah. Menard from Ashland, who I you know I told you about with his brother. Um, he's not going to get an opp- other opportunity. How do you feel about that, uh, Mark? A sixth year <laughs> for some of those people. So, you know, <clears throat> that's been, I think it's been interesting. I, I like reading what people say. I've, I've heard D3 coaches, um, when they, they made the announcement about, uh, hey, this canceled or whatever, and they made the big mistake of sending that as an email and not blind copying everybody. They sent it as an email, included all the emails, so then the reply all started happening. And, Coaches were saying things like kids should be granted another year of eligibility or they should be able to go next year, even if they're not in college. Even if they're taking no classes, they should be able to take come and compete again. Um, people were saying I was reading that. Stuff about the, the, I was reading stuff about high school. People were saying they should let college freshmen. I mean, granted, this is probably a minority saying this. College freshmen should be allowed to compete in the 2021 state tournament. Um, and I'm sorry. I, I, I don't think, mean to laugh, but that's ridiculous. Like – you know, uh, anytime you're faced with something like, right, like as a uh, as a wrestler, like you know, you you could have these irrational thoughts of like, you know, I probably had it like when I was finishing up and didn't finish high one. I'm like, oh, what if I, what if they found out I had an extra year of eligibility? Like these are are it's like, what would I do if I won the Mega Millions? Like these are normal thoughts, I think, to say this is wrong. How do we fix it? But then, first of all, like. The NCAA, the financial implication of this is is going to be devastating. So let's just be ho- hopeful that we have NCAA sports next year. Um, but I just think it's it's horrible that these kids it stinks. But I don't know how you can just start making new rules because there's going to be so many consequences that 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 come from it. Um, right? Of now, what do you do with scholarships and everything, especially Division One and I think that one of the problems is the teams that will benefit the most, there'll be three or four schools that benefit if you give D1, you know, added eligibility, and and, and those are the good teams, and you're just going to widen the gap. I, I don't know that, that that's right. Um, D3 is supposed to be an, more of an academic model. I mean, how do you, you say kids, hey, don't, don't move on with your life? Um, it's it just, I don't know, it's horrible, it's sad. I just don't think that's the answer. I mean, I think if anything, we should be looking at a way to to run a tournament in the summer. Even like maybe all you need from the NCAA is send in the awards and give us your blessing and allow us to practice for a couple of weeks. Right? It, that seems to be more realistic. Like, don't ask for money. Don't ask. Everybody's on their own. Brackets are the same. That seems more realistic than allowing people to come back a whole another year. Um, I don't see that happening either. Quite quite honestly. So. I think it's it's horrible. It stinks, but man, life stinks. I mean, most people who who ever wrestle, 
that's that's the game. The game. How many people are state champs or even state placers? How many people are all Americans? How many people are even starters in a college team? Yeah. Like this sport is built around a bunch of dudes who busted their butt and, and didn't get trophies, and now they're 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 crushing it in life. So I mean, life stinks. You know, your your family. You're gonna have a kid get sick, or you're gonna have a, a you know, you're gonna get lose your business. Like, what do you do? You can't sit and cry about it. So, um, you know, and again, I'm saying that knowing that that I think all those emotions are normal too. So I'm not attacking any of those coaches. I just think it's a horrible situation. I just don't know that you can just start making all these exceptions now. Yeah, man. That, that life stinks. And right now, life <laughs> in America, and it's not even that bad. I'm home. You know, I, I was out cutting wood with my kids. and I was splitting wood, and they're helping me stack wood. And yeah. In front of fire, hanging out. We're playing. We're, we're hitting baseballs. We're – we're doing like you're home with your family right now. That that's like the best thing. Yeah. Right? For me. Well Yeah, think of all the places again, and I don't like it to sound like put out be on a soapbox here, but across the world, uh, you know, people like our inconvenience is like we had a like we bought extra food just in case that, you know, we can't go to the store or something. Like with the money we have and the places filled with food. Like it, it's just yeah, it's a tough world we live in, and, and yeah, I'm quite frankly, I'm grateful we we have the opportunities that we do because um, it allows us to, to to be upset when little tiny things go wrong, you know. So that's uh, and that's a good thing, I guess. Like I want my my own two children, like I want them to be like disappointed. Like the worst thing that's going to happen to them is you know some girl dumps them or they lose a wrestling match or some other sport. Like that is hopefully the worst thing that happens to them. Um, so, you know, and, and, and if that's it, like you say, we're pretty, pretty darn lucky. And, and you know, I've, I have some history as, as a coach, I've had some tragedy. I mean, that's almost made me numb to maybe uh, a situation like this. Like, yeah, big deal. We lost wrestling. Like I've lost people, you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, it, it puts things in perspective. I think we all have an opportunity to be better from it, quite frankly. So I hope that's the case. No doubt, man. I mean, it is. You're right. I mean, they have satellite images of them digging mass graves in Iran. Did you know that? Yeah, I did not know I, that. I, but I don't I'm know, not surprised. I don't, you yeah. know, like they're digging mass graves in Iran right now. That that's how bad this has hit them. And obviously, it's hit Italy really bad. Um, Italy has a large percent of their population that smokes, so that is really uh, okay. a contrib. It contributes to whenever you have a respiratory infection. I mean, sure. your smoke. I've also heard Italy has an older population in it's general. An older, it's um, like Japan and Italy have these huge bo uh, baby boomer, or yeah. the kids they're calling them now boomers. They have sure. huge baby boomer populations, and then they have a smaller. If you look at the, chi the Chinese population, it looks like this. It's like a pyramid where you have large amount of kids, four, zero to fourteen. You know, fifteen, yeah, to twenty-five. Yeah. They have massive population because they got one point four billion people. And then they sure. have a very small, older population. You flip it for for Japan. Japan has a smaller, younger population than they do older. If you didn't know that, yeah, it's yeah. just it's like demographics well, and and how it is right now. And and even if like and you're you're in Auburn, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I'm in. Or I live on it's, it's two acres, and I'm thinking there are people who are. So yesterday, I mean, not that we're on any type of lockdown, but like me and the boys were like playing around outside like you say you're cutting wood it's like if they said like you can't leave your property there are people who they're who are confined in like a you know 200 square foot space if yes. that happens like for, for me it's like yeah man that's that's smaller than my garage <laughs> so and, and they got i mean shared, yeah and shared air we're, ducts. we're pretty lucky here yeah for sure Sh they're sharing air ducts with the rest of an apartment too and uh, with yeah. Oh, geez. I didn't think of that. That's scary. Think about that. They're sharing a lot of the air ducts are shared. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we were, I was in Italy last spring. I mean, uh, incredible place, but yeah, very much packed together. You know, at least the parts we were in the main parts, but, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's wild. It's pretty scary, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't last too long. So John Carroll is closed for the remainder of the semester, May 15th. All fitness facilities closed. Classes will be online for the remainder of the semester. So I'm, I'm assuming that's going to follow. I've heard schools will be 
they haven't you know pulled the trigger but supposedly i'm hearing schools could be shut down for the till the summer summer break so i think i i'm, I'm hoping that the disease doesn't get worse but i, I think some of the the precautions will get worse oh, yeah. you know in a sense next 10 to 14 days is gonna be wild yeah yeah you know, so like well, what you well did, lucky for people like me and you we're we're in jobs where <clears throat> it's not it's not you know crushing us yeah what's a server do what's a server do a bartender do what do they do i don't know yeah that's that is scary yeah and, and i have a rental property both the guys work in a restaurant oh wow they can't pay their rent is my guess i mean i don't know but just wild man you're like you're saying we're we're pretty lucky we're pretty lucky so all right, you got anything else for me? Uh, no, I mean, I guess uh, since, since everybody else is doing it, uh, recruiting is going to be a challenge. So I've been seeing the funniest thing is uh, – Oh, the dead period. Are you still – are you on the dead period too? We all are, yeah. So I don't know if it's funniest or whatever, but I'm seeing like coaches are literally like – Division One coaches are going on Twitter like, hey, you know anybody? Send them my way. I'm going, wow, this is going to be – this is going to be spread out, you know, where people are going to go – you know, we can't count on our, our commits. We can't count on bringing more kids in. So they're just they're they're changing their tactics. So I got I got to use this as a, as a uh, I guess a marketing tool here. So John Carroll, you know, hit us up if uh, you know any young guys are watching. Um, I think we're a place that can can prepare you for the real world, but but hopefully uh, get you some wins on the mat too. So that's uh, that's my shameless plug right there. What is your guys like? What's the big major for you guys? Like, you know, you, you go to uh, Purdue, it's engineering, right? You know, yeah. I, I describe John Carroll as even within our team, 50% of our guys are business, 25% are science, 25% are everything else. Um, so the sciences are typically kind of on a pre med or at least a pre, maybe not, you know, going to be a doctor, but like a pre physical therapy yeah. type of thing. Um, so our, our big thing is our, our business college we have um you know that that's what we're, we're best known for um in terms of academics so that's most of our guys so we we have a very uh our guys are very similar like they're all have kind of the same thing they all want to come in here wrestle get a degree and then make money that's kind of the, the typical john carroll guy um so that's our big thing uh and, and uh, a lot you know some guys wish if I think one or two of our seniors are graduating might stick around and, and get their MBA too, which is kind of cool. So that's our big academic push. And I think, you know, one of the big things is our network just being connected in uh, Northeast Ohio, especially of, of you go on a job interview. I always use a story. I went on a job interview for an internship when I was in college and the guy was a Carroll guy who played football. And we talked about football and wrestling for the entire interview. Like there was no, question about like my work skills or like my brain or anything it was just like wrestling and football stories and when it was done i'm going like like what just ha i was a young guy I didn't know anything. I'm like, what just happened like is that bad like all we did was bs the whole time and then the, you know and that was it and then that was actually a preliminary they invited me back for another interview. I'm like wow this is awesome that's 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 what john carroll's all about so volkman was probably his one of his football coaches for sure, yeah, yeah. And then Volpe yep, was so your yeah, head Volpe coach. Was, was for a while. And DiCarlo, DiCarlo was wrestling and then became that football coach. So, yeah, mm -hmm. wrestling's very much intertwined with, with the history of John Carroll. I mean, those guys, you know, London Fletcher was just up uh, for uh, – he was put in the College Football Hall of Fame. And uh, so I see him at, at the game because we were at the concession stand and we're talking about Volkman. And he takes Coach Moran, our, our former basketball coach, up on the Goodyear blimp and stuff like – yeah, we're just connected with stuff like that, and because it's just all these guys impact a lot of lives, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. And they're all, and everybody knew knows everybody. Volkman and and DiCarlo are just you know, very few people were in athletics and don't know who those guys are over the past fifty years. No doubt, man. Well, hey, I'm gonna cut this interview. Uh, hang yeah, on yeah. a little bit afterwards. I want to talk to you a little bit afterwards. But dude, thank you for the time. I appreciate you. Go check out. You can go check it out on uh, you know on the Facebook Live copy will be up right away you can go check that out but uh hang out a little bit here and thanks for the time all right yeah thanks Dad.